आज The concept of triage is simply a method of quickly identifying victims who have immediately life-threatening injuries and who have the best chance of surviving, so that when additional rescuers arrive on scene, they are directed first to those patients. The START triage system relies on making a rapid assessment of every patient and marking them with one of four colored acuity categories. Each assessment should take no longer than 30 seconds. Remembering the formula called RPM will guide you through the start triage assessment process. Respirations. If the patient is not breathing and does not begin breathing once the airway has been opened, mark the patient as deceased or black and move to the next patient. Triage team members should not begin CPR on the patient who is not breathing and does not begin breathing once their airway is opened. CPR will delay the evaluation and care of the remaining patients on scene. If the patient begins to breathe after opening the airway or is breathing at a rate greater than 30 times per minute, mark the patient as immediate or red and move to the next patient. Perfusion. If the patient is breathing effectively at a rate less than 30 times per minute, the triage team member should next evaluate the perfusion status of the patient. Gross bleeding that can be quickly controlled with direct pressure should be immediately addressed. A bystander can assist in maintaining pressure until more first responders are available in the triage area to properly address the injury. The presence of a radial pulse is the most accurate rapid perfusion evaluation tool. While some publications advocate the assessment of the patient's capillary refill, this is not as accurate as a peripheral pulse check. Patients without a radial pulse should be marked immediate or red, then move on to the next patient. If the patient has a radial pulse, the triage team member should next evaluate the patient's mental status. Mental status. Once the triage team member has determined that the patient is breathing and perfusing, they can turn their attention to the patient's mental status. Many times the patient with an altered mental status will be evident at the start of the assessment. Patients who are confused and cannot answer simple questions should be tagged immediate or red without any further evaluation. If the patient is breathing effectively, has a strong radial pulse, and answers all questions appropriately, but was not able to walk out of the immediate area with the walking wounded, tag the patient delayed or yellow. This patient most likely has an injury that is not life-threatening, but will prevent them from moving. Ribbon method for marking patient acuity levels during primary triage. Ribbons or flagging tape have proven to be faster to apply, less prone to errors, and have a higher level of visibility than other methods. After performing start to determine the patient's category, pull out and tear off approximately two feet of tape of the appropriate color from the dispenser. Using a standard knot, comfortably tie the ribbon section around one of the patient's uninjured extremities. After securing the ribbon to the patient, utilize the count card on the ribbon dispenser to indicate the acuity category and if the patient was an adult or a pediatric. When a triage member's assignment is complete, the count card is read back to the triage unit leader to provide an accurate tally of patients by acuity. Total count information will be provided to the IC and MedCom through the chain of command. The triage unit leader will maintain his tally worksheet for accountability and post-incident documentation. Triage tags are applied to patients as they enter the treatment area after quick secondary triage to confirm or change their acuity category. If treatment areas were not established, the triage tag is applied to the patient just prior to transport. Properly utilized, the DMS triage tag provides patient accountability and tracking through the treatment and transport process. Accountability documentation is an important component of proper MCI, MPI management and post-incident reporting. Patient accountability is achieved in the treatment areas, if established, by removing the outer colored category receipt that matches the patient's triage category. The receipt is placed in an accountability log sheet by the treatment area manager. The unique number on the receipt matches that of the triage tag, allowing the area manager to have a complete record of all patients that entered the treatment area. Proper patient accountability in the ambulance loading area is critical for ensuring accurate bed availability counts and patient tracking. Just prior to a patient being loaded into an ambulance, the transportation receipt located on top of the DMS triage tag is removed by the transportation group supervisor or a designated ICS position given that responsibility. Mandatory fields on the transportation receipt, such as acuity category and destination hospital, must be completed. 
Optional fields on the back of the transportation receipt are available if time permits or policy requires. Completed transportation receipts are placed in an accountability log for quick reference if needed and for post-incident reporting. Each transportation receipt contains an abbreviated version of the unique barcode number in the right-hand corner. This is the patient's identification number. This number is to be used in all communications when referring to the patient. The simplified format will prevent delays or errors inherent in other numbering systems. The unique four-digit number can be found on all components of the triage tag for full reference through the treatment, transport, and hospital admissions process. There are several other components of the DMS tags designed to increase efficiencies at scene which should be reviewed during training or multi-company drills.